Sonny Bunch for our new audience. And we do have a new audience, Sonny. City's 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal, WRPWFM in in our friends in southern Illinois, home of the Redbirds, by the way, Illinois State. So if you've got any shout-outs to Illinois you've got on your chest, Sonny <laughs> Bunch, go for it. But I want to talk to you about three movies beginning with Marley, because I am ambivalent about Marley. I, I take a little bit of reggae. It goes a long way with me. What do you think? Well, did you have you have you seen it? I haven't seen it, you because I haven't seen well, it. Reggae does nothing for me. I mean, my my all of my experiences with Marley are uh, you know dorm room posters, uh, which were very popular. People, you know, the the, the stoner population very into uh, Bob Marley in college. So I I, I got to be honest, this is not this is not a movie. For, it's also a musical biopic, and those are uh, I I've had a hard time watching those ever since parody film Walk Hard. Uh, the Dewey Cox story, uh, because it, it just kind of destroyed that whole genre for me. You know, you, when, once you see the structure of these things, they're they're all pretty. I pretty don't know that life. movie. What's it called? Oh, walk, walk Hard: The Dewey Cox Story. So it's it's a uh, it's a parody. It stars John C. Riley as a um, as a Johnny Cash style singer. It's basically a parody of Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash. Uh, the Johnny Cash musical biopic, but it also just, uh, again, it, it kind of reveals the structure of these things. You know, you basically you start in the present and then you flash back to the past and then you see the struggles with addiction and then there's the triumphant return. You know, well, I, I, mean, might, I might watch the Dewey Clark story. I always liked him. So that, that's on the possibility yeah, Dewey, list. Now, the Dewey Fetching Cox. Mrs. Hewitt has a request. Yeah. yeah. The Taste of Things, French movie. Ugh. So. Of course, my I'm, my my defenses are up, but what say you about the yeah. taste of things? Well, look, Hugh, this is this is a movie that's getting lots of raves uh, from from critics, and it's you know uh, it is a it, it's it's the fabled movie for adults, right? It's not my cup of tea. This is not me. This is not what I uh, I am am going to. I'm not going to a lot of French romance. Uh, pictures. That's that's not me. I'm more of the the comic book guy. Hey, just one more one more musical movie uh, thing though, because I did. Uh, there is a new there's a new documentary uh, out on Netflix right now about the making of um, the uh, the We Are the World song. Remember, remember. Oh we yeah, Are I've heard that this the Podhorts and the Commentary Gang love this this movie. I can't remember it, the name of it. Yeah, it's uh, the the name of the movie is uh, the Greatest Night in Pop. Uh, the greatest night in pop, and it's on. It's on Netflix, right? It's right on the front page of Netflix, um, and it is again. It's it's about the the making of We Are the World. Here, two or three things that are going in its favor. Number one, it's only ninety six minutes long. A lot of these Netflix properties tend to be, you know, two and a half hours. Right, like right, right. Episode mini series, ninety six minutes, perfect length for this sort of thing. Uh, number two, it has going in its favor lots of uh, archival footage. I mean, they filmed the whole thing. They filmed. Uh, the 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 taping of the you know the music video they filmed the actual recording of the song they had people there shooting um, the the musicians as they worked together on their individual segments uh, so tons of archival footage and also uh, it just it just has this it has these great new interviews with like Lionel Richie talking about working with Michael Jackson and he has this hilarious look he has this hilarious story essentially making fun of how how weird Michael Jackson was, you know, kind of lovingly, but like just just highlighting the weirdness of being in Michael Jackson's home. I, I don't know if you know Abe Greenwald, the very talented executive editor of Commentary. He's part of the Commentary podcast. And he pointed to a, a segment, which I want to watch for, where um, we've got Bob Dylan having no idea what to do. Bob Dylan, the legend. Yeah. Bob Dylan completely confused about what he's supposed to do or how he's supposed to sing. And so um, uh, uh, who, who calls him over to the Stevie piano? Wonder. Yeah, Stevie, and he comes over and Bob, and Stevie Wonder mimics him, and he just then reproduces it. it it's yeah. hilarious. No, it is. It really is funny. I mean, like this is a you know a mild spoiler, but it, it's so funny because Bob Dylan is just he's standing there, he's kind of mumbling, he doesn't he doesn't seem to know what to sing, and Stevie Wonder just calls him over and sings like Bob Dylan. He's like, "You sing like this. This is how you sing all the time." And Bob Dylan's like, oh, yeah, that's right. That is how I sound. I should sing like that. And it does it. I, it's, one of, it's very, very funny. Um, and there, there are a couple moments like that. It's, it's really – it's very nice. You know, look, it, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, dark cloud behind all this is that it doesn't really uh, get into, you know, where the money went afterward and all that. And 
I, I, we, we could have discussions about the usefulness of sending big pallets of cash to, to Ethiopia to stop a, you know, a famine that yeah, was they sent it to Mengistu who probably use it for weapons. I mean, they're not right. the world's brightest people. They can put on a concert, but they're not the world's brightest people when it comes to geopolitics and strategy. Yeah, that, I mean that you know. So that that's a that's a separate thing. You know, if you want to you want to get into that, watch Black Hawk Down. That'll give you a better uh, sense of of the actual politics of that sort of thing. But the the for what it is about the song itself, it, it's really it's really quite quite lovely and fun. Okay, now I have one for you, which I bet you haven't seen, that crossed my radar briefly, called Land of Bad. Oh, uh, oh man, Hugh, I want to see this movie. So I, I do actually really want to see this movie. Uh, they didn't, uh, I don't think they had screenings for it in Dallas. They did not have uh, screen. that is not a good sign, you know that. Yeah, but the uh, but uh, I, I'm excited for this movie because it's basically Russell Crowe playing a drone operator. Uh, uh, guiding one of the lesser Hemsworth brothers through the jungles of South America, uh, as he it, it looks a little bit like um, God, it looks a little bit like uh, Clear and Present Danger. Yeah, Remember Willem Dafoe was the controller there. He was Mr. Clark. Yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, but uh, no, I'm I I really want to see that because again, I'm a I'm a total sucker for look. I'll I'll watch Russell Crowe sit there and you know read the phone book. And it looks like he's almost doing exactly that. You know, he's just sitting at a drone operator's desk the whole movie. So, Well, I am reminded of the best. Uh, the, first, I should ask you, what's the best spy movie ever made? Ooh, uh, it, I mean, do, are we counting Are we counting the, the, Jack, the Jack Ryan movies in here? You, the, you can count whatever you want. I, I, my, for my entry is Spy Games with Redford and um, Brad Pitt. And because it is, and not, and Redford does nothing in the movie except go between telephones and walk around the CIA. So it, you know, you don't sometimes have to leave the set to actually be the key figure in a in a spy movie. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, look, I would I would go with uh, I actually prefer Clear and Present Danger to The Hunt for Red October, which I know is a bit of a heresy. That people, is. people get people get very very upset about that, but I I have always preferred Harrison Ford. Uh, Jack Ryan to Alec Baldwin's, and I and I've always loved the uh, the the kind of South American jungle assault sequences. Uh, they're just really well done action set pieces. But it also has the best car chase shootout uh, sequence I've ever seen in a film. The alley. Oh wait a minute! Uh, attack. Ronan. Oh, uh, Ronan's a great one. Ronan is a Ronan's a, another another real good. That's one. that's uh, the car chase. I know that the French. Uh, connection set the stage, but not the standard. But I thought the standard was Ronan. Are you saying it's really um, this movie? Well, I, Clear and Present Danger has that sequence with the SUVs in the alley. Remember where they get kind of boxed in uh, and they they're, they're getting they're getting blown up by the the drug lords, uh, which is just again, it's just it's a it's a it's not kinetic in the way that uh, the the car chases in Ronan are. Those are much more kind of open road. Uh, you know, going going around big curves and stuff. This They're also in like the, Siena, where the streets are you know six inches wide. I like that yeah. part. So I've got to ask you. Uh, you got to cast for me two people. We're going to have the Robert Hur story, and we're going to have the Fanny Willis story coming to a screen near you soon. Who's going to play Fanny, and who's going to play Robert Hur? <laughs> I go, Hugh. I hate these questions because I don't. I, you know, it's impossible to. It's, it's impossible for me to answer this sort of thing because. Do you want do you want a good actor or do you want an actor who looks well, no, like No, cuz these are going to be bad movies cuz they're not very interesting. You know, that, we found out that Joe Biden is not all there and Fanny Willis should be off the case. That's what we found out thus far. And thus endeth the martyrdom of Fanny Willis. I mean, that they'll they may try and turn her into a hero. I doubt it cuz her testimony wasn't very good, but do you think anything has got the potential in in the Trump trials to be the OJ of 20 years from now? Uh, no. In what sense? Well, in the in the sense that everybody watched the People versus OJ, it was terrific television. Well, no, they, no, they no, no, it, nothing, it, nothing, nothing will ever be like that again. You, nothing, nothing will ever be like that again because there we we live in such a fractured media landscape, and people won't actually watch the trial or watch the testimony or any of that. They'll just watch the TikToks after, right? They'll watch the the, the tweets. They'll watch the, I watched a lot of Fannie news. Willis yesterday because I was riveted by her combat her her decision to go combative 
You can, in a yeah, hearing like that. that, you can give up and say, I made a mistake and I'm sorry, Your Honor, recuse me from the case and throw it in and, and save yourself the embarrassment. But she went angry and combative and don't persecute me. I'm an African-American woman. I'm not going to defenestrate African-American men. And then her f- former friend comes out and says she's lying. So, you know, it, it was just sort of dramatic, yeah. but it's also not a murder. Well, well, she she also she I mean, she looked like a prosecutor, right? This is this is how prosecutors behave. They get very angry when anybody questions, you know, what they're what they're doing. They feel like they should be kind of in charge of of that room. It's a yeah, I feel like that's a that is a kind of archetype, right? Yeah. So You're we a have lawyer. a long, dry desert to cross before we get to the Oscars. Right. We don't get any new movies for a long. I saw a trailer for a summer movie. Uh, when I went and saw, I didn't see Ferrari. That's out of theaters already, so that must have been terrible. Did you ever review Ferrari? Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. It's not. It's not my favorite Michael Mann movie, but it's it's good enough. Uh, Dune Two is the the next big movie. That's that's what we're we got coming up on the horizon here. Yeah, I'll be seeing that one by myself. I'm afraid the fetching Mrs. Hewitt's not going to go for that. You got anything else for me, Sonny? Uh, stay away from Madame Web. Nobody should go see that movie. It's terrible. Oh, I, I love I love level. warnings. Stay away from Madame Web. Is that directed at children or at adults, or is it a horror movie that they forgot to release at Halloween? Oh no, just just any if people who people who enjoy movies that make sense and are good should not watch Madame Web. Because okay, I got an economics good, question for you. That makes sense. And yeah. we got one minute. AMC is now offering unlimited movies for a base price per month. How much the trouble A-list. are they in? Well, no, they've been doing this for a long time, and and there's there's an argument to be made that this really is the future of movie going i don't love it as an economic business model uh for movie theaters because it it's the sort of thing where look the way it works is you you go to a movie and then the movie theater reimburses the studio so if you go see you know 12 movies a month they're sending the studio 50 bucks for your 20 dollar subscription uh, but the, the whole Ooh. idea is to get people in so they're buying the popcorn right that's what they want so you know maybe all right it works. Sonny Bunch has two podcasts, Across the Movie Aisle and The Bulwark Goes to the Movie. Both of them are great. You can follow Sonny on X at Sonny Bunch. Remarkably easy to remember and spell, at Sonny Bunch. Thank you, Sonny. 